brought up against me and an excessive bond will be required. I thought 
Ms. Taylor gave a good statement of how she got that out of uh, retirement plan and company club, but regardless, uh, then the end got a whole bunch of money over there at the bottom home. And then it said, it talks about this as we own most of this list. Y'all get back there. 
you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. Just disregard my handwritten notes up there. The state of Mississippi, if you want narcotics, versus $100,000, they're coming. It's seven, so it's four pictures. I want to show you some pages from it. He just made a big deal that Robert didn't know to take the tamper with. This is from Travis Turner. This is on page 228. Mr. Turner put that together in. And he said, based on your experience working with this piece of equipment, installing it in service, what would be the cause of not being able to work with the proper core now being supplied? Answer that it was tampered with in some sort of form. Now, I want, I want to tell you something when you look at this transcript. Or when you look at it. You will find that he was very effective in cross-examining. One of the main points he made is this could have been accidental. In other words, they could have put in the wrong power point. And he made more active than it is later in the transcript where it turned uh, seems to retract that and said, well, I don't know, I'm not sure. But he did say at one point it's been tampered with. Now, another part, you remember Mr. McBride tell you one thing made me suspicious of these agents? That there was a witness over to the search named Joshua Ledford. His testimony is in the transcript, they never mentioned him. And he talks about being there, and he witnessed the celebration they had when they found the money. <coughs> and he mentions they were talking to a confidential informant during the search, Mr. Lefkoe said. You know, I asked him, they wouldn't tell us who the confidential informant was, but well, how do you know he didn't put the money there? But they, according to Mr. Baker, they were talking to this confidential informant the whole time they were doing the search over there. Well, I'm sorry, I don't mean the whole time, during the search they were talking to him. Now, on page 246, here's some important testimony that prosecutor in good faith would decide about whether he could prosecute a case. This is what Mr. Ledford said his narcotics agents told him on page 246 of the fourth page here. They were pretty much telling me that I know this. And this is this. We're going to take your daughter away. He's come up there with his daughter. to exchange birthday credits. And these narcs are telling her I tell this man they'll take his child. That's a killer offense. His child. They will take his child. If you don't tell us this, that, or the other. And Mr. Lefkoe is telling them, I don't know anything. I just came over here to exchange presents for my child. <clears throat> now listen to this. One of, one of them, he's talking about the narcotics lady. One of them even made a remark along the lines of, you know, why are you taking up for this black SOB? If the shoe was on the other foot, he wouldn't do it for you. This is what they're telling Mr. Lefkoe. And Mr. Lefkoe said, well, I don't know about all that. And the shoe ain't on the other foot. I don't know anything, so you do whatever you got to do. And he talks about seeing the dog. Well, that was important to me. They'd already hit the dog. They found the dog. Why did they bring the dogs in and did the little legitimate search? Except that they were going to try to let the dog find the search, you know, find the dog so they could say, well, the drug dog found it. Of course, he didn't do it. It didn't work. He said he saw the dog. And they accused him. They said, why is the dog getting on your bed? And he says, well, there was nothing there. It was just harassment. And then he goes on again. 
in. They're going to take your dollar away if anything comes out of this. We'll have you arrested. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And all these little ones come over. Pick up a birthday gift for the dog. He said he never smelled any unusual odor or anything while he was over there. They said they smelled strong marijuana all over the house. Explain this when he gets up. Why? 
if brothers are cat, if the brother doesn't know anything and he just a drug dealer, why are they so scared about him going to grand jury? Why is that? Why don't they want not to go to grand jury? Robert was arrested on June 22nd. Remember that? The next day, June the 23rd, this is a detailed order that Judge Well attended. He didn't, in my opinion, you read it, you decide for yourself. But it plays a good common sense and say, do I think Judge Well just found out on June 22nd Robert Smith had been arrested, so I entered this order the next day? It's very well written, it's very good grammar. Very thoroughly done. And he talks about these various sale hearings he's had, hearings where the, not the public can know what's going on. And he goes on and on about how long the drunk he is. The problem, look at this. The undersigned is to do well things. If necessary, under these extra circumstances, to disqualify the district attorney for participation and knowledge in the grand jury process. The next day after his arrest, now you tell me they're not working together. And you tell me why does he not want Robert going to the grand jury? We know now because Johnson, uh, there, Johnson has told them that. that that these matters are going to be presented about the two attorney generals and Judge Will to the Now, let me mention something else to you, considering your thing. <coughs> Big long exhibit. It says 73. I'm not going to talk to you about it, but if you look over, start around page 9, it's here before Judge Roberts. And you'll find out in there that Judge, that that order was illegal because it violated due process, and the Supreme Court eventually overturned it. It's in there starting on page 9 about what Judge Will did. But without, you're supposed to give somebody a hearing, an opportunity to be heard, and all that before you distribute the accused. But Judge Will took away his right to go before the grand jury. A grand jury that he knew was going to investigate him and these two assistant attorney generals. Not that they would have ever been indicted. I don't know what the grand jury would have done. And Mr. Reed sounds like an honest person to me. If he thought they didn't do anything wrong, that would have been the end of it. But he entered that order to keep Robert from going to the grand jury, from keep him from doing the job that the voters elected to do. Thirty minutes has expired. You're now in your second thirty minutes. You may continue. Yes, sir. Absolutely. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'll take a short.